Coming up on Theater Talk. We know where the focus should be at all points. Mm. And if you move a muscle <laughs> and it's not your turn, it ruins the balance and it ruins the comedy. Does Jerry so Zaks ever have to say, you're all, all the time? The time. <laughs> this episode has been adopted by Chappie and Melissa Morris. <laughs> From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins, and I'm joined by my guest co-host, Adam Feldman, theater critic and editor of Time Out New York. And Adam and I are here to talk about Hello, Dolly. Yes, and with us from the cast of Hello, Dolly are Kate Baldwin and Gavin Creel, who, of course, were in the original cast of this revival. And joining them, Charlie Stemp, who has just stepped into it this week as we are recording this. Uh, welcome, all of you. In the role of Thank Barnaby. You. In the role yes. of Barnaby, Cornelius Hackle's sidekick uh, in the show. I'm, and, I'm Barnaby Tucker's sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. So, uh, Charlie, here's my question. You've only just arrived in the show. You've only been doing it for a few days, I know. But how long has it taken you so far uh, to prepare for it? How long have you had to put together this performance? Well, um, back in the autumn, I kind of came over for a couple of days and like watched the show a few times and had like a little practice of, of certain things. But really, most of it's been over the last uh, week before we started, really, kind of getting it all together. Because it's one thing going over the scripting, going over, you know, the dances, but it's very different when you're in a room with, you know, these lovely people. It's, it's obviously a, a very different atmosphere. So. How did you come into this production? Um, the process? Uh, the process, luckily for me, was I got a call from my agent who said to me, do you want to go to Broadway? And I said, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I, within two or three weeks, the job was booked and I'm, now I'm here. So it's been, it's been a very quick and crazy So you process. didn't audition? No, luckily oh, enough no, I but didn't. Because you, I, although you are new to us here in New York, my understanding is that you have appeared and starred in a number of West End uh, productions, uh, including Ooh. Half a Sixpence. Half a Sixpence. Because it sounds like a parody title yes. <laughs> that an American would make of a West End musical. But, uh, but you starred in that, yes? Yes, I did. Originally, uh, the show was played by a guy called Tommy Steele, which is... Uh, I'm old enough to remember, yes. <laughs> and he came to Broadway, so the show yes. actually came to Broadway as well. It was a huge well. hit, yeah. Yes, huge hit. And then uh, it was a... Re kind of revamp of, of, of an old show and it, we did a lovely stint in Chichester and then in London and yeah and it finished and as we were finishing I got the call about coming to join join you all here. But in between you did a you did a holiday show. I did yes I did a pantomime which is a very a British mm. uh, a British thing that happens in most of the theatres across the country through the Christmas periods and I did one called Dick Whittington which is based on a young man trying to rid London of rats. Oh, that's a very that's famous folk yeah. tale. Yeah. Now, Kate and uh, Gavin, did you have originally have to audition for this production when Hello, Dolly was... <laughs> I'm the only one who oh. had to audition. I don't think you had well, to I, right. I'd had a, uh, I'd worked for our one of our producers, Scott oh, Rudin, right. yeah. for three and a half years in Book of Mormon, so I had a really that's good right. relationship. And I'd done Lacage with Jerry, so I knew the team. I, I was very lucky to... But I would have gone in. I knew that you Same. were cast when I went in. And, uh, well, you had a very competitive role. I mean, I would think every every actress. Oh, they were all there. All my friends. Yeah. yeah, all my friends were there. We were like, hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? And I honestly looked at the group of ladies. I was like, no, I'm not going to get this. No way. Because sometimes I play casting director and I think, ooh, they'd be really good at this. Yeah. Uh, and I went in and I remember that day because I had picked out the wrong dress. I thought I was picking the. I, I'm, I'm a mother, we were buying a house. We were, there was a lot of other things going on in my life. Right. I was like, yeah, I'm get the green dress. I didn't get the green dress, I got the blue dress. The blue dress was Why not the right dress. Why is that the wrong dress? dress? Because it just slit all the <gasps> way up the side. And oh, I thought, oh, this is not wow. Irene Malloy at all. What am I thinking? And I walked in and Jerry said, hi, how are you? You look great. <laughs> and I went, oh, okay, I think that this is gonna work. This is gonna work just fine. <laughs> so, and I read the scenes and I did the song and they said, will you wait outside for a little bit? And I said, sure. And I went and talked to my friend Michelle Pock for a while. And then I went back in and did another scene, I think, a, a, an additional scene. Got back on the subway, went home and got a call. Hey, would you like to do Hello <gasps> That Dolly. fast. That quick. That's so you great. You nailed it. You it nailed was, it. And I know really for sure I had really talented friends who were called back for 
callbacks, and then they got calls that said, oh, callbacks are canceled. They found someone, and we didn't know who it was. <laughs> wow, and, that's and, amazing. Yeah. And then I texted you. I just said, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Like, Bravo. Bravo. Yeah. So when a new person comes into the show, in this case, uh, Charlie, how much, I mean, is there hazing? Is there how much? Because <laughs> 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 I mean, often you know, you've been doing the show for eight, eight or nine months. Or, yeah, right. right. Yeah, um, yeah, we started we started rehearsals a year ago, so yeah. nine, mo nine months of yeah. shows or yeah. so. So, I mean, uh, how much time do you get to work together? I mean, you are already performing it, uh, and, uh, but I understand you have rehearsal right after we, we tape this, so you're yeah. still, it's still an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. um, what's the process of finding a new performance within an existing show like that, and how much do you get to help shape that? It's kind of a new thing now, um, of being in, in a show that's successful and, and wonderful, and, and then to say goodbye to somebody you love very much uh, or a few people that you Several love very people, much. Yeah, yeah we, lo we lost. Like they're, they're all another Broadway show. <laughs> you're, but you're, you're losing that little player, Bette Midler. Yeah, right. th yeah. That, that Spitfire. Yeah, we lost four principals, right? Yeah, and four so principals and three wonderful ensemble members. There are nine principals in the show, so it was almost half. Yeah. So I remember the very first day of going in to rehearse with I don't even think you were here yet. No. So Michael was filling in for you, but meeting Molly and seeing Victor and Bernadette for the first time and going into that rehearsal space and going, oh, wait a minute. I'm in the minority here of yeah, the, the people cast, who've yeah. done it previously. They've all been rehearsing this show together and have a, a version of it, a wonderful version of it that I now have to put myself into. Well, if they were rehearsing together, yeah. who was you? My oh, understanding. Oh, yeah, so so there's been sort of a mishmash um, of uh, covers and understudies because Charlie was unavailable because he was doing Dick Whittington, so mm -hmm. his understudy was in for a while. And um, in, in order not to exhaust us, they would put in Leslie or Chris and Beth or you know other people to sort of help the new people learn what they were doing. So it was really kind of it must have been crazy for you too to try to uh, assimilate performances because everybody's just a little bit different, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, Going into, I always find going into a, a, a cast that's kind of already set, set up. You you have to find a great balance of trying to trying to bring what the previous person brought to the part, but also what you want to bring to the part at the same time. So you know these guys were so wonderful at you know, and so is Jerry at trying things. You know, can I try this or you know, can I try saying it like this or can I try coming in from this side instead of this side? You know, and everyone's so welcoming and, and I think that's quite rare in in a, in a show that's had a cast change because normally it's very much stand here this gets a laugh mm -hmm. if you say mm -hmm. it like this well how no. much leeway do you have to add new material or new sort of specialty points for the things that you do well, we've done quite a bit over the last couple of couple of uh, charlie's a fantastic dancer and taylor's a great dancer too but they, taylor who, who was taylor trench taylor yeah who's going to be dear evan hansen yep. he's not he's, evan he's going to dance so well in <laughs> i know <laughs> Tours, jumps, so while well, sobbing, totally while crying sobbing the whole and dancing. time yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but they wanted to capitalize on charlie's ability in that and and just try something new and it was really fun they switched a couple things in dancing, the, the song dancing, and it's just, it's neat to see that the creative team and the producers are up for not setting something in stone and allowing somebody new to have a life, because it just gives, it gives, I, I've replaced, I replaced in London in, in Mary Poppins, and being an American coming into a British company and, and being the only person changing, this is what Charlie's doing that way, you just sort of, you just sort of assimilate, and I just keep saying to myself when you ask, like, what's it like, um, it's not anywhere near done yet. We're, we're gonna, I'm, I'm like, just to sit back and see, I wanna meet Charlie's energy and understand what scenes are like with Charlie because we're like a team out there together. And I had 10 months of performances, nine months of, uh, of actual performances and four, months, four weeks of previews with Taylor. And it took us a while to find our rhythm and then people would give you compliments and oh, that's the worst. <laughs> when they say, oh my God, you have such amazing chemistry. You can't make chemistry. You just have to like stay open to it. For me, I think. And with Charlie, it's like so easy because he's such a lovely guy. I, I don't know what you find with Molly, yeah. he's lovely as well. It's, yeah. But you have a love affair with Beanie and. and I, uh, totally. But I was so excited the very first time we had an audience because I saw what Molly was doing. Mm -hmm. Molly, the I, new, your new Molly, Molly Griggs. Griggs, the new Minnie Fay. And, she, and the audience was responding to her, and I was watching her sort of process it because she'd done it in a rehearsal room where everybody knows all the jokes and it, you know, and everything was landing. And there's this moment when we're both um, sort of like shoved into a little uh, workroom backstage where there's just a little curtain, be, you know.
know, and we have to whisper because you guys are on stage. And I was like, you are killing it. This is so exciting. And I saw her get excited and thrilled for the first time, you know, Broadway debut and <laughs> stuff that she'd been working on in the room but didn't know if it would land or not. And then and, there and it was. It did. There, yeah, and it was so, it's so, it's such a thrill to watch oh, that happen. I want to ask yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, we have to get you to rehearsal so we don't have all oh. that much time left. But I, I, I had the good luck of seeing you, your production, your initial production with that Midler twice. And the second time I timed how long it was between the <laughs> end of Act One yeah. and when uh, Dolly reemerges, and I believe it was 45 minutes, and you were carrying, it's a long time, and you are carrying, you come back from the intermission, yeah. and then it's your show for elegance for a good yeah. long time. And I and I wonder two things. I mean, there's that energy there, but also I wonder, she's putting on her costume, but what are they, is that built into the show that that big time? I absolutely for the, not to take new writing to task, but no, no. there's more shows now that have the actor on stage for 90%. We were talking about this with, yeah, with, yeah. with uh, Half Six Minutes, mm -hmm. where they're out there for a long time, they're singing so many songs. Yeah. We saw it, in, when I saw it in Millie, when Sutton was like, oh my gosh, you know, it's more of a new thing to have I think the old show is really, really well crafted. Gives, we have, there's two sets of supporting characters in our show. And that's not necessarily just because we want to see more stories, which we do, and it's exciting, and it's the source material. It's the source material. But it gives you opportunities. Thornton Wilder wrote, you know, whoever's playing Dolly Levi or whatever, it gives time for you to, it's great to reconnect with the cast, take a breather, get off stage. I mean, Little Taylor out there, and you're having hands. I mean, I don't think he leaves the stage. No, no. I just go, how do they do that? But, but they give her, they give Dolly plenty of, time, you know, some good time, and then you yeah. shine. You're it, out it's, there. Well, yeah. We but try. are you allowed? Yeah. I mean, this is, I guess, I don't know if you can answer this question, but when you're in a, a, a show like this that is marketed and built around a star performance, an over-the-title star performance that everyone is very excited to see, mm -hmm. are you allowed to sort of go all out in all of your scenes, or is there some sense of calibration within the production Good. about how much you can do and how much focus you can be perceived as, as, as taking? Well, the hat shop scene, which if you've seen the show, you mm -hmm. know is a farce, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. is very specifically and um, minutely calibrated so that we know where the focus should be at all points. Mm -hmm. And if you move a muscle <laughs> and it's not your turn, it ruins the balance and it ruins the comedy. And if you want to uh, have your team worked well together and have the, the laughs come as they should, you have to know when it's your turn and when it's your turn to listen and watch. Does and Jerry so Zax ever have to say, you're all only for the, the time. time. <laughs> but that's yes. the thing, you listen to that man in he situations knows. like that, he knows. Trust him 180 percent. He knows how to do it, yep. and you have to, and you're just part of it. Yeah. Yeah. But she's a genius. I'm going to say real quickly, she's a genius because I spend so much time. When do you watch her tonight? There's, I, I watch <laughs> Kate watching, and she's completely invested, completely honest, but also exactly sending the energy is coming out of her directly to where it needs to go. Wow. It's a, it's a master class. Well, no, no. Oh, well, it is. Thank it you very much. You're very, very sweet. You're very sweet. Yeah. But it is that thing of like, of directing the audience's focus too. This mm -hmm. person's doing this bit now. You need to watch this in order to have that. And David Hyde Pierce was so good at that. I feel like I learned so much just by watching David. Oh, I'll bet. Because he was a master at, at telling you where to, where to look too. And so that's why it's so fun to have Victor and Bernadette mm. come in and to have them and, and Charlie and Molly too, and have them uh, as a part of that. And you see the craft of it. You see Jerry's craft, and you see the craft of Thornton Wilder. And you, that hat shop scene is <laughs> awesome. What's the big difference? What, was the, what would you say is the fundamental difference between the performances so far? Of Bet and, and, of, Bet and of Deep Bet Bernadette, and, and, and leave out the word fabulous or anything like that. Well, What's I the do, difference? I, I, do have I know to it's say, only been a week. I do have to say, we were spoiled rotten with Donna Murphy of mm -hmm. understanding what yes. it was to shift gears between two oh. brilliant performances. So we were ready to accept because of Donna's amazing contribution to the show. Mm -hmm. So we, I was ready for it. Mm -hmm. And Bernadette's, Bernadette isn't doing, she's, she's just honest mm -hmm. and <laughs> pure. And full and giving you every color you want. Mm. You know, it's it's all in there. And that's what a role like Dolly Levi allows yes. you to do, right? Yes. But she brings all of everything you love about her to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and and we have to tip our hats to Jerry Herman. You bet. Oh my gosh. Always. Oh Absolutely. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And Michael Stewart.
and to you, Charlie Stamp. <laughs> Yay, Charlie coming, Stamp! Coming across the ocean to grace us with your first American performance. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Dolly. First. Yeah. Barnaby Tucker. <laughs> Thank of you many. so much. Thank you, Kate Baldwin. And welcome back to Theater Talk. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin Creel. Thank you welcome you. back to Theater Talk. We had you in hair oh. so long ago. <laughs> and congratulations on your Tony nomination Thank and you. congratulations on your Tony Award Thank you. for Winner. Hello, Dolly. Thank you. Bravo to you all. What a pleasure. Now get to your rehearsal. I don't want Jerry Zach's mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nice guys. Thank you, Adam Feldman. You were divine. Pleasure Have to you be back here. Soon. All right. here with Jesse Green, co-chief drama critic of the New York Times, to discuss what's coming off Broadway in the winter-spring 2018 season. And we are back with Patrick Pacheco, New York One, LA Times, and that great book, 100 Years of the American Theater Wing, Michael Musto of NewNowNext.com, Elizabeth Vincentelli of the New Yorker, the New York Times, and Three on the Isle. Adam Feldman of Time Out New York and the president of the New York Drama Critics Circle, and Jesse Green again co-chief drama critic of the New York Times. What's coming to Off-Broadway that we're excited about? Well, we were, we were talking in the last show uh, about, uh, uh, I think you, Elizabeth, talked about, wouldn't it be great if Denzel Washington, instead of right. coming back in another classic on Broadway, came back in a, some brand new show by one of these young writers, you know, so or, we- Or can, not we, so young, but alive. <laughs> <laughs> so where that really is more likely to happen, albeit without Denzel Washington is off Broadway, and there's a lot of great stuff happening this season. And so, Patrick, you want to talk about Hangman, which is written by someone who may very well win the Oscar this year. Again, yeah, another again. Oscar. Um, that's Mark McDonough, of course, and it's his new play that's coming from from Great Britain, from London, and it is about what it, it what it says is Hangman. That this is when they did hang people in the UK until about 1963. I, I think it's set in the early 60s when. Uh, Harold Wilson, the Prime Minister, banned hanging and capital punishment. And this is kind of a typical, melodramatic, violent, crazy drama. They got funny. very good reviews and very funny, of course, because it's black comedy. Mark McDonough's specialty, which we saw in his uh, film Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. And it's playing at the Atlantic Theater, even as we speak, probably, and uh, with rumors of a Broadway transfer. Totally sold out almost the minute. Yeah the minute it was announced, but it's hot and uh, really looking forward to this one. Uh, why don't we just sort of go around and be by, begin by asking... Yeah, give a pick. ...something that each of you is particularly looking forward to. Uh, Jerry Springer, uh, the opera, I saw like a presentation years ago. And <laughs> it was raunchy and funny <clears throat> and also took some of the characters seriously and had a couple of great knockout songs, so I actually liked it. <laughs> I haven't seen it, and I'm terrifically eager to see it. It's a, it is, in fact, in the first act, basically a replication of a <laughs> fantasy version of, of an episode of The Jerry Springer Show. And then at the end it of that first on. act, uh, I, I won't give it away, but in the second act, he's uh, sort of fighting with the devil. Well, I was actually also going to Go say ahead. Jerry Springer, uh, but I'll pick something else. Um, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to a show called Returning to Reims, which is going to be at St. Anne's Warehouse in February. Kind of long run for them. And it's directed by Thomas Ostermeyer, who did a fantastic Richard III uh, last fall. And it stars Nina Haas, who's one of Germany's premier And was just actresses. in... Uh, she, was in, she was in Homeland. Yes, Just playing uh, the uh, agent, Astrid, on, on Homeland. Uh, and the play is a German production, but they're doing it in English. It's a very interesting play, and she brings a lot of her own personal life in it. She talks about her real father in it, and the way they bring it up is, is very clever and very well done. So she wrote it as well as stars it? Well, it's based on memoir, on a uh -huh. French memoir, but which has no part for a woman in it. Uh -huh. And she wanted to do it, so they came up with this very interesting uh, concept to give her a part in, in the show. It's, it's, very, it's actually, it doesn't feel forced at all. It's very well done. Uh, and then it kind of goes away a little bit from the book in the second half of the show. Um, it's, it's just a really, as I, saw, I saw a video of the Manchester, premiere in Manchester, so they're kind of bringing it over. Uh, I think it will really resonate with people in, in the Trump era, I would say. And a lot of the themes also will be familiar uh, to people who have read a hillbilly elegy. 
So Very if good. you know that book, it really mm. is going to, it's really about what happened to, to families. Yeah, how lousy things are here now for people. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a very thought-provoking show. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Adam. Uh, well, in addition to those already cited, uh, I'm, uh, I'm excited. Soho Rep, which was kicked out of its uh, headquarters in Soho a couple years ago and has been struggling to find a new place, is actually moving back into that same complex. And the first play that they're doing there is something called Is God Is. And uh, it's described as an Afropunk Western. Yeah. And I'm very curious as to what that can mean. And the play won... Um, the, you know, when Philip Sumer Hoffman died, they established mm. a very lucrative playwriting prize in his name. <clears throat> and this is the one that won that, this is the playwright who won that prize uh, in 2016, uh, the second time that it was given. The first time was The Wolves. Right. And so that seems like a pretty good record so far. Uh, and I'm very curious about how this play is going to come about. Uh, also a play called The Amateurs. Um, which is... Oh, that was mine. Oh, <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, but it's, uh, it's Jordan Harrison's new play, and he wrote Marjorie Prime, uh, and it has what looks to me like an extremely promising cast. And it, at least at the beginning, it seems to be about a troop of actors in the 14th century struggling to deal with the realities of the Black Plague, although I think it wow. goes in other directions mm. from there. That's at the Vineyard. At yeah, the Vineyard, yes. How about you, I am looking forward to Our Lady of 121st Street by Stephen Adley Gurgis at the, at the Signature Theater. It's his season, but this is going to be directed by Felicia Rashad. And to me, the combination of Stephen Adley Gurgis and Felicia Rashad, I cannot even comprehend. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm dying to see it. She is a very elegant, austere presence to me. And he is the most down to earth person in the world. So it's a stylistic It's a stylistic combination, that... which is going to be fascinating. Didn't she replace? Yes, um, yes. And they're like a kind of last minute Yes, and I don't remember who or why. Let's make something up, shall <laughs> we? She replaced Bernadette Peters. That's right. <laughs> oh, as she now. did in Into yes. the Woods. <laughs> Bernadette is in Hello, Dolly, and she was unavailable for the direction. No, one of the great actress <laughs> theater people of our era. And uh, I'm interested in all these uh, shows that we've mentioned, uh, but uh, I want to point out there's a nice combination of two plays, one called Kings and one called Queens. <laughs> uh, Kings is at the Public Theater. It's a new play by Sarah Burgess, who wrote Dry Powder a couple years ago. Tommy Kale directed um, and was, a, I think, her first play mm -hmm. and was a, a quite a good first play, and I'm really eager to see this. And he's directing one. this one, too? Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. This one also has a promising cast. But, uh, and, and as all plays do, has a promising cast. <laughs> um, and then Queens, which I'm terrifically excited about at Lincoln Center Theater's uh, LCT3 space at the Claire Tau, is a play by Mar Martina, is it Mayock? Do, you, do we know how to say uh, her yeah, last name? Yeah, I think name? it's Mayock. Mayock, Martina Mayock, who wrote... Um, last season's play, Cost of Living, which we were talking about earlier, which was a terrific play about uh, people, two people with uh, disabilities and two people who care for them. Oh, it went in very unexpected directions with that story and previously uh, had a great play called Ironbound. And this one, uh, I've now forgotten even what the plot description was. Sometimes off-Broadway, all you need yeah. is the name of the play, yes. <laughs> uh, and sometimes or, the name of the city. Or the Why actors, uh, or, like Relevance with that, Jane Howdyshell and Pascal right. Amon. Ah. And do we know what that, uh, we know a little bit about it. It's a generational that. conflict. Right. Uh, you set, can fill in, she's a great campus, lady. I think she's, she's a, a great kind of, writer or something. I think I think she's a kind of uh, older, established feminist. That's it. And then uh -huh. we have a, so, I'm going to say in quote, a social justice warrior. Right. Like I'm, younger I'm hearing, campus. I'm hearing about a lot of original plays here, which is not something we heard last week when we talked <laughs> right. about Broadway. Well, exactly. that's, that's the point. Yeah. Exactly. And some of these will filter their way to Broadway, I'm yes. sure. But every the, uh, Broadway, for better or for worse, virtually 100% known entities in some way or the other. Well, I, this, we're, we're, we're curious. I mean, it's going to filter. I mean, yeah. I, I believe that Lobby Hero and Three Tall Women, that is their Broadway premiere. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. you know, it'll take maybe... Uh, 30 hopefully years. Hopefully it won't take 20 <laughs> well, years. Well, I think Hangman will be on Broadway before the end of right. this year, even yeah. though we're going to be seeing it off-Broadway. Sometimes it takes years to get off-Broadway. Jerry Springer, you yeah. know, right. yeah. has taken you know, all these years to get... From well, the, now, what, was that, why was that? Why was that? Uh, well, it, it, it played in London. There was talk of a transfer, and then the timing was wrong. And, well, they, um, I, they, I did a, they did a 2008 I saw that Carnegie Hall, Hall with Harvey Keitel, yeah. who was terrible. <laughs> well, but, be that as it may, but, what was the problem with bringing the show? It was finances. Oh, no. oh. They lost because, their investment. Now, someone said to me that it was so very lewd that maybe that well, was Well, there was the a scandal in England brought, brought on <laughs> by the 
conservative religious folks, right. are, you know. But well, it, it was sued for blasphemy. So uh, maybe and that scared off some courts, people. And, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I mean, know. It, it. I seem to remember it being so mild compared to the. It's not that mild. Uh, well, I mean, it's. I just listened to, to it again because we were writing a piece about it, and it's. 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 It's challenging. You know, oh, I can see I, why people would take offense. But um, as much as well. I, I don't want to cut off a discussion of new plays off Broadway theater. in case you have another one that you. Will no, it was just relevance. Anything that Jane Howdy shall. Yeah, in exactly. Is but good in my but there's also often at BAM and at St. Anne's we're seeing, uh, you know, new interpretations of things we may already know. And there's a couple of those I'm looking forward to. Also, there's a, a Carol Churchill play called Last, you know, Light Shining in Buckinghamshire. Oh, somebody say that 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 English town for me, please. <laughs> Buckinghamshire, Buckinghamshire, how do they Buckinghamshire, Buckinghamshire, uh, at New York Theater Workshop, which was done here quite a number of years ago. I did not see it. I feel like I'm a Carol Churchill completist, so I really <laughs> uh, want to catch it. Even the it. one with the hat. I I will watch. I it. love that. Oh, I love the hat. That's one of my favorite. Far away. That's one yeah. of my favorite. Love the hat. Far away. We'll yeah, I, I agree with <laughs> love the Adam. hats. And, and there's a, Anthony Sher is doing King Lear. Oh my oh. God. Okay, really, are you excited about that? Because I saw that announcement and I was thinking. Jesus, why? <laughs> well, I wish it weren't King Lear, but I'd like to see Anthony Sher. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Lear is a pretty, pretty good play. Good. I'm going to go out good. on a limb right. and pretty say. Good. Well, yeah. would you go for Jeremy Irons and Leslie Manville in Long Day's Journey and Tonight? If I can't interest you in. Yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> no, yes, sure. I mean, sure. <laughs> well, how about the Go Go's musical? Can I? Oh, okay. <laughs> now, all right. All right. now we're talking. Now we're talking. And on that Woo. note, on that note, I want to thank you all again, mm. Patrick Pacheco, Michael Musto, Elizabeth Vincentelli, Adam Feldman, and my co-host, Jesse Green, co-chief, drama <laughs> critic, theater critic, all theater critic <laughs> of the New York Times. Thank you, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you all again. Four of you are my co-hosts now. <laughs> here. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Our thanks to the Friends of Theater Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Bow Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you.